we are here at the 2019 Hearst Fest at the Fowlerville Fairgrounds. Just hearsing around, the Hearst Group moved it here so it could expand and get even bigger. So we are going to go interview some of the amazing Hearst owners and check out the rides that are here. Let's go. So you brought us to Fowlerville this year. Welcome to Fowlerville, to the fairgrounds. And are you happy with the turnout? I am ecstatic about the turnout. So what is the final total count on hearses? The final registration count for hearses was 127 hearses, which is almost... 40 hearses more than our previous record, which was 90 some. That was two years ago. Wow. So, literally skipping last year because of the cancelization and then moving it out to here, we literally increased ourselves by 30%. I couldn't stress it enough though. If you're even thinking about it, if it's a consideration in the back of your mind, don't hesitate, act on it. You'll be happy no matter what your friends and family might say. As soon as they ride in it, they'll never go back. My name's Harold Bailey. Just got a hearse because it's different. A lot of people don't have them. They, you go down the road and they'll either give you thumbs up or they'll snarl at you. <laughs> so <laughs> just now it's just an everyday driver. When you're riding in it, you think you're just in a regular station wagon, so you really don't pay much attention to it. And do you get to drive it? I don't drive it. No, I just ride in it. The, our, there's talk of us camping in it, but. Not yet. <laughs> you have to modify the back. Yeah. A... <laughs> yeah, there's no door handles, so if you get yeah. in, you can't get out. <laughs> I don't know why they didn't put door handles on the inside. <laughs> So tell us what style hearse this is. Um, this is a 92 Buick Roadmaster wagon that was cut and we've got it stretched maybe about that much. Okay. Wing um, number seven seven eight. The top is a I think superior superior top. I'm into cars a lot. Uh, I went to a car show uh, and found a flyer for Hearst Fest. We both like that. And cars, um, oddities, I thought it would be fun. Oddities, I like the yeah. word oddities. It's a 77 Cadillac DeVille. It's uh, got a 425 big block. I'm usually the only orange one you see at car shows. What, did you paint it orange or did you buy I, it orange? I had bought it orange from a country music station. It's kind of random. They had used it for like haunted houses and whatnot and <laughs> Halloween parties. How long have you had it? Over five years. Do you drive it every day or just for shows? Uh, sometimes every day and shows, kind of both. On her. What led you to buy a hearse? Uh, my best friend's stepdad had a bunch of them and I'm, it just kind of, I thought they were cool so I had to get me one. And do you think you'll always have a hearse now that you have one? Um, yeah, it's part of my life now so I'm the, stuck in the hearse life.
right, so this is your hearse. Yeah. Tell me the details on it. Well, it's what a, year, make, it's model? It's a 74 Cadillac Fleetwood uh, Superior Coach. Um, it's uh, 22 feet long. It empty, it weighs 5,500 pounds. Uh, I put a spring over lift on it. Uh, it's basically like the, the leaf spring, and here was the axle. All I done was go like this with the axle. So it instantly gained six inches of, of height. People think I have airbags, but I don't. It's just, that's how it is. And it's stock, uh, but it's got some custom exhaust. Uh, got flamethrowers on it. Yeah, it's got, it's got a train horn on it. Uh, always wanted a hearse. Ever, ever, before I even had my license, why? I just, like you're so excited, you're like yeah. almost shaking. Oh yeah, shaking. I love them. They're, they're tanks. They're beautiful, well taken care of cars. Uh, it's just uh, the creepy. Yeah. Yeah, this song. Yeah. Uh, so. And I love this color. Is my this is you. my favorite. It's because I love the color. Right. Why did you pick this color? It's, well, I love it too. It's my favorite color. It's synergy green. It's the color of the new Camaros. So, I, as soon as those new Camaros came out, like, that's it. It was uh, Georgian silver. It's kind of like silver, but you look at it and it's got a purple tint to it. Okay. Uh, so, and then it started getting some rust. So, I had a little bit of body work done to it and new paint job. So, it's it's, thank you. It's kind of a Paul Bearer's nightmare to look oh, yeah. this high. Oh, yeah. I gotta give a heave. One, two, <laughs> on three. Yeah, get them up here. I love it. Yeah. Do you drive it like just every day? Nope, nope. I only break it out September and October. That's uh, what I'm hearing today. A lot of people just yeah. bring it out. Do you go out and like check on it when it's in storage? No, I have it. It's in my barn. Okay. But yeah, I do. I fire it up, keep everything circulating. Sometimes I'll just pull it out of the barn, do a little figure eight, just keep everything, you know, moving. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, put it right back. Uh, I keep it up with a full tank so it's fresh gas. Uh, yeah. What's the next? What else are you going to do to it next? Is there more plans for it or is okay. it? Uh, one thing I want is, uh, uh, I want a... Uh, <laughs> I like how excited you get. <laughs> oh yeah, it's awesome. I want uh, a trailer hitch and I want a luggage rack because who says you can't take it with you? You can. So, oh yeah, yeah, I'm going to. Uh, so I want a trailer hitch, a <laughs> uh, luggage rack, and uh, what I would like to do also is get another hearse, a, a junk one, and uh, uh, have half of it gone. You know how people take the bed of a truck and make a trailer out of it. Yeah. So I want to take the back half of a hearse and make a trailer out of it. It's been done before by Will, and uh, that still gave me the idea. So that's what I want to do, make, a, make a, have a hearse and a half. So that's what I want a trailer hitch for. And also the uh, uh, casketeria over there. Uh, I have a couple caskets, not with me because I was hauling people, but uh, <laughs> hauling people. Oops! But, <laughs> uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> but yeah, I got a couple of caskets. Uh, but I want to make some of them a, a one of them a go kart and the other one okay. an actual trailer, like a. So you want to expand? Yeah, yeah. But I would love to have uh, airbags, airbags, I, airbags, not hydraulics, but airbags. So make it make it move. I don't want to make it hot, but just make it move. Yeah. Go up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you so much. You're welcome so much. You get that a lot. Well, and in and and truth, there's a lot of morticians, there's a lot of funeral directors who drive them as a regular car, which is very cool. Um, there, but you have that 18 year old who's looking for an inexpensive ride. And in truth, a used hearse from a funeral home is a very affordable ride. The insurance is crazy cheap considering how unique these vehicles are. So you can be the talk of the school, you can be the talk of the neighborhood, and it's only going to cost you a couple thousand dollars. You don't have to have the hottest ride out there. You know, as you walk the lot, you can see them. We have rust buckets. We have cars that have been dilapidated and ignored. And if they fire up, they drive. We bring them, and everybody enjoys them, no matter what condition. Yeah, they're loved. They're absolutely loved, and nobody can say that better than the community itself. 
you know, not only would you bring a rust bucket in, but everybody's going, hey, you got a piece of chrome that's not supposed to be on this car. Is that from the factory or is that something you did? And nine times out of ten, it's something that was done at the factory because these cars are so unique. They could be two cars off the same line on the same day, in the same week. But there are alterations that the general home will choose. We want this chrome package, we want that chrome package, we want this window, we want that window. And it's these little things that make them different. Even though they're the same, they're never the same. And especially since most of these cars are hand built. So there's always alterations and we're all kind of scoping each other out and seeing who's got the uniquest thing out there. And oh my God, did you talk about this? Did you see that? It's such a cool car. So where did you start in this journey to get this part? So it started a long time ago. No, um, I've always been crazy about purses anyway. And there's a museum in Houston, Texas that is a museum of the funerary. Right, exactly. And so while I was there, in one of their displays, they have a 1972 Japanese hearse. Okay. So my wife and I were there years ago, and I was like, oh my God, that's the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life, someday. Well, my whole world is someday, and then I have a list of someday vehicles. So a few years ago, my motorcycle shop that I have in Cleveland, Blatant Plug, Cleveland Moto, is weird motorcycles. It's weird, it's like not all the same bike, it's all weird eclectic motorcycles. But in the winter, we all sit around and hate each other, because it's Cleveland. And I had this idea that I was going to import some Japanese cars, because in 1989 and 1990 in Japan, the Tokyo Motor Show, show was like somebody said, all the cars look the same. They all look like Honda Accords. They all look like Ford Tori. There's nothing cool. So why don't we build some cool cars? And Nissan and Toyota stepped up and built all these weird, weird cars. And the Tokyo Motor Shore was like, get out of here. They're, you're not going to really build that. They built them. So now those cars are all over 25 years old and they can be legally imported into the United States. So I took that as being like, well, that sounds like a business opportunity for the winter time. So what I do is I, I buy all these Japanese cars that are over 25 years old and they can be imported to America. And then I, I buy them purely selfishly. I buy them just because they're the ones I want. And then I drive them around for a while and check the block and then other people go, that's cool. And I go, well, yeah, and now it's legally titled in America and it's all the hard li heavy lifting's been done and it's here now. So I sell those cars to people. But in the case of this one, so this one in particular was just that deal where I said, this someday. Well, after looking at a number of them in various states of disrepair, as a 30-year-old car would be, this one was perfect. So this particular one, it was still being used. It was still in service. So, shoo-in, I had to have it. So the negotiations ensued. And here we are, and it was shipped over, and I, you know, I, I picked it up from the dock, and uh, I've kind of like, I've always sort of, uh, some people say they have spirit animal. Mine is Godzilla. Like I like the whole idea of just waking up every couple of hundred years, destroying things, and going back to sleep. And that's where this idea came from. So this is my Godzilla response team vehicle. Again, you don't need an amulet; you need a hearse. So, so. what? What is the base of the This vehicle? is a Japanese Toyota Crown station wagon. And uh, the interesting features are, of course, the steering wheel is on the correct side. The, it's, a, it's a four on the tree, so you have to shift with your left hand whilst getting a house down the road. Yeah. And uh, it handles like, well, a house. Uh, it's, most of its weight is well above the axles, as you can imagine. This is all actual wood. These are built by craftsmen. Uh, they are built from the inside out. So it's not like you could just slide that out if you decided you wanted to have an El Camino. Nope, that doesn't work that way. Uh, the thing is totally functional. It's the Buddhist method of having a funeral semin uh, ceremony is different than ours. Right. So this would be transporting your loved one to the crematorium after they've been in your home or in a hall where they could be respected by the family. And this is what would take them to their final place of departure and uh, so consequently there's that Buddhist and that Shinto vibe with it of honoring them so they wouldn't do anything as vulgar as putting them in a limousine or uh, what Americans call hearses this is their idea but this has gone away as the culture in Japan has changed this is sort of too much so now it's turned into minivans 
So this is from a time that they don't do anymore. And it's so much fun to drive, uh, you know. And it runs down the road 75 miles an hour, and you know, I, I went through a lot of trouble to make sure the air conditioning worked, and all the, the creature comforts are all there. I feel yeah. like if I looked in my rear view mirror going down the highway and saw yes. you coming at yeah. me, yeah, it casts, I would like run into something. It casts a really long shadow. Oh my so goodness. So uh, it is one of those things that it is an event just being around it. Yes. And uh, they are so much fun. And it is for that different mindset. It's for people who are, you know, you can't be antisocial and own this. No. You're going to meet people. And it really is fun. So for me, with that sort of uh, outgoing personality or that like, hey, this is a cool thing and I want to teach you about it, yeah. um, this is a great thing for that. Well, it's like people say when you have a dog, your dog reflects you. Oh, I boy, like does it? I it's the same with horses. Yes, like your it is. horse is such a reflection of your personality yeah. and your your being and right. everything. And it, isn't that the thing that when you meet a human being and you see what they're driving or you see their right. pet, you're like, yeah, I saw, I saw that coming. Yeah. yeah, I could have guessed that without thinking about it too hard. And these are, um, now I did take the rollers and stuff out because okay. we do want people to climb inside. We want to see the ornate craftsmanship inside. So we took the rollers out so people can get in it. Oh, and wow. this is a very touchy-feely experience. So we're not hands-off with this car, we're hands-on. So we do want people to sit in it and check it out and, and kind of see what it's all about. Do you rent this out for I funerals don't. or anything? I'm still very much like, it's my toy. I don't want to yeah. rent it out. I don't, I don't want to share it. Right, this is my toy. And uh, so we did have some people in Cleveland, though, that said, you know, for the Buddhist folks that live in Cleveland, perhaps they would like to have a traditional ceremony. And yeah. so that I have entertained the idea of maybe using it, putting it back into service um, in Cleveland to be a functioning vehicle. So it's fun, awesome. but it is a load of fun. Yeah. This is so cool. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. So much. Oh, it's my pleasure. It's of Fowlerville and a final parade for the day. It has been amazing. Check out the hearses and one final parade down the road.